All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Hopefully you can see my screen and see the PowerPoint here. If you have any questions or tech issues, please drop a note in the chat. I will do my best to navigate back and forth, but bear with me. Um, I'm not the most tech savvy young person that you'll ever meet. So luckily I have an 18 year old sister and um, she gets me out of a lot of tech issues, but she's not here. So hoping this goes smoothly. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Tasha. I am one of the wellness coaches at the Waukesha Employee Health and Wellness Center. Thank you for joining us for our virtual garden surplus produce maximizer workshop. So I have to hand it to Courtney. This was kind of her idea to, um, given the season, put together a list of ways that we can maximize um, our, our garden produce or store-bought, any type of produce that we have in the house, uh, not just currently, but you know, moving forward throughout the rest of the summer and, um, and years to come. So, come on. Oh no, why aren't you going? There we go. Okay. So the reason why this is an important topic for us is food waste is actually the, the leading form of waste in landfills. It takes up more space than any other form of, of trash. Um, in the U.S., we are throwing away an average of a hundred and of $120 each month per household, not per person, but per home, um, of four in the form of uneaten food, uh, in the form of uneaten foods. So for each family of four, um, if you have more than four people in your family, or if you have less, that price will be a little bit different. Um, but again, that that's a pretty, you know, hundred dollars, give or take a month, um, that comes out to $1,200 a year, give or take lay down. I'm working from home today, you guys, and my dog, which is a giant German Shepherd, um, automatically goes from being fast asleep and silent to running around playing and bringing me all of his toys as soon as I start talking. He thinks it's time to play. <laughs> so um, forgive me if you hear uh, tennis balls squeaking or nails clicking on the ground. That is him and that is why. All right. So <laughs> okay. this, is, this is why food waste is um, important to reduce where we can and hopefully these tips will help. So just talking about for a minute what's in your garden. If anyone wants to take themselves off of mute and share uh, what they have in their garden um, currently or what they've grown in the past, um, please feel free. I will start. Um, we have a very small yard, but we've done the raised garden beds at like the, the shelf gardens. And we do, we do a lot of herbs, um, so basil, mint, things like that. Anyone else want to share what you guys are growing? I can't be the only one with a garden. All right, that's okay. If you don't want to come off mute, that's all right. You can always um, put your whatever you want to share in the chat box and we can review it afterwards too. So hopefully this is still relevant and helpful for everybody. Again, even if you don't necessarily grow your own produce or um, have a garden, you know, we all go to the grocery store, right? So this is especially helpful for, I think, those of us that maybe want to focus on our health, getting in our vegetables, being a wellness coach. That's definitely a topic of our conversation. So um, leafy greens are the first type of produce that we're going to focus on. Um, I'm not going to read through each line, so I'll just share with you guys real quickly. Um, by the end of this week, tomorrow or Friday, Courtney will email out the all of these um slides in a PDF form. So I'm not going to read through line by line. That's why this is the express <laughs> session. Um, you're going to be able to review these nutrition benefits for each produce slide that we go through today on your own. You can read through that in your own time in the future. What I'm going to focus on right now um, are just the tips for storage. So you can kind of have some quick, um, you know, get in and get out tips for for the day and get back to um get back to to your afternoon the rest of the day but storage if you have any greens at home right now rinse and soak 
for 10 minutes in very cold water. Um, that's important. If it's lukewarm or hot water, um, that is going to speed up the aging process. So cold water slows the aging process um, and actually gives it um, more internal moisture, which makes it last longer. And then dry um, with a paper towel or a salad spinner if you have one of those. Um, and then storage, this is actually something that I've seen and I can attest to is um, putting those rin rinsed and washed leafy greens in a sealed plastic bag, like one of the big gallon ones, um, kind of squeeze out as much air as you can, um, and then poke it with a, a pin or needle or really tiny um, knife uh, poke um, and then keep it in the crisper drawer. I've also seen people, um, instead of poking the plastic bag for a little tiny air hole, to put a damp paper towel um, in there in the bag with the greens. And that seems to keep them um, moist and, and fresh and vibrant uh, longer. So that is a storage tip for leafy greens. Keep them from going bad, reduce our waste. Moving on to the next type of produce ca category. Alliums, which is the official scientific name for our garlic, onions, um, leeks, things like that. Again, I'm not going to read through all of the nutritional benefits. I think we all know that vegetables <laughs> in any form are healthy for us. Um, they have slightly different properties, but um, again, you can review nutrition benefits um, when the PDF slides come out uh, tomorrow. Tips for storage for our garlic, onions, and leeks. We want to keep the um, onion, and gar onion and garlic bulbs in a cool, dark place. You may have heard that before, well ventilated, um, but separate and not clumped together. For leeks, which is obviously it's in the onion family, um, it's similar to an onion, but not quite as potent. Um, it's a little bit more palatable uh, for people who don't like onions. It looks a little bit different. Um, store these unwashed in a loose plastic bag in the fridge, so cool, dry conditions. Green onions should be stored in the fridge, actually in a cup of water with a loose bag on top. And all of these alliums can be chopped and flash frozen as well. And honestly, that's how I preserve and keep a lot of my fruit and vegetables, any produce that will um, thaw <laughs> or uh, reheat well, I, I will freeze. All right, getting into corn, seasonal favorite right now. Tips for storing corn. Um, I think a common one is wrapping in a plastic bag and putting in the fridge with the husks on it. Those are just kind of give it a protective layer. Um, keep those kernels from oxidizing and, and losing their um, um, perkiness, I guess. Um, if you want to freeze the corn, then you'll want to cut the corn off the cob and then freeze, you know, just the kernels um, or, or hunks of the kernels sliced off the cob. Um, then to kind of revive them and warm them up, um, cook and remove or blanch um, will, will bring them back to life pretty well. And I think corn is pretty versatile. I think we've all seen corn in its various forms, um, canned, frozen, fresh. It does pretty good. Cucumbers, this is another crowd favorite. I think a common one for this year, uh, for this time of year, I'm thinking of like Texas caviar and some other, um, you know, traditional summer recipes that um, cucumbers are a staple in. A lot of Greek foods, which I love, uh, feature cucumbers. So this is usually a household staple. To store it, maximize its lifespan, wrap each cucumber individually in paper towel and then store it in a loose plastic bag in the fridge. Um, keeping in a warmer part of the fridge, like a door or upper shelf, so it's not directly next to where all that cold air blows out, like in um, like a, a crisper drawer, um, depending upon how your fridge is set up. Um, I noticed when I accidentally put, I've done this a few times, mistakenly put some sensitive um, things like cucumbers and leafy greens, by the way, do not do well in the coldest, the absolute coldest parts of your fridge. Um, they tend to wilt um, and get kind of dark colored and soft and mushy. Um, and that's what cucumbers will do too. So cool, but not freezing. Um, and then if you have them sliced, 
uh, store them by putting them in a sealed container filled with water. Um, and actually, I'll even add a pinch of salt to that water too, and it's good for up to a week. All right, I'll pause here. Any questions and feedback so far? Doing pretty good. We're about halfway. Um, I'm going to power through the next few food groups. And then when we get to the end, I'm going to go through just in general um, canning and preservation uh, tips. And then we'll open it up for questions. So potatoes, another um, staple, I think, common household item. Tips for storage for potatoes. Cool, dark location with ventilation. I think that's I mean, I consider myself not being super well versed <laughs> um, in how to maximize all types of produce and Cordy and I both did some research on this um, to educate ourselves. Um, so I learned some stuff in, in this process too, but this is one of the few things I, I did happen to know um, be just because of my personal experience with potatoes. I've learned, yeah, if, if you just throw um, the bag you know, on the counter, uh, or in the fridge, um, certain places are prone to sunlight or humidity. Um, they grow little friends, so we don't want that. Cool, dark location with ventilation. And another trick, too, is to not just have them all lumped together in the bag. You try to take a few out, um, space them out if you can, or put them in smaller bags with fewer potatoes in each bag instead of one big, giant Costco-sized bag. All right, our root veggies, carrots, beets, radish, radishes. Any other root veggies I'm forgetting? I know there's more. But anyway, any root veggies. Tips for storing these. Cool, dark, and humid. So they do like a little bit of moisture. Um, you may have noticed that if you have a bag of carrots in the crisper drawer where sometimes it can get a little bit too stale and dry. Um, the, the outer fleshy part of those carrot skins will dry up. Um, you can bring them back to life by rinsing and soaking them in water, um, even kind of taking a, a vegetable brush and brushing the outer layer. Once you've gotten the carrots or other root veggies wet, uh, will kind of slough off that, that dried um top layer but to prevent that from happening cool dark and humid ideally sealed plastic bag not allowing a whole lot of airflow in there um, and that airflow is what dries out the the skin so if you want to cut the tops off of carrots before refrigerating um, this will preserve the moisture as well but you can use the greens as as well um, so you can add over on the right hand side that column that says use it up. You can add the the carrot or other um, root veggie tops to pesto or salads. Um, you can roast puree and um, chop it to add to pasta sauce. Courtney is super creative adding little bits of anything into muffins, baked goods, smoothies. She's got two little kids at home, um, so I think that's where a lot of her creativity uh, and tips come from. So if there's any uh, fellow parents out there, you can take it from another parent. Courtney, I think, has tried a lot of these with her kids, so kid tested and approved. All right, going on to tomatoes. Tips for storage. I think... Before I get into this, it says, do not store in the fridge, big, bold, capital letters. So we know we know not to put these in the fridge. I'll get more into that in a second. But first, I guess I do want to touch real quickly on the lycopene um, for nutritional benefits for tomatoes. Um, so this, you may have heard of this particular element um, in, lyco, in the lycopene in tomatoes um, is an important uh, antioxidants um, because it can help when in conjunction with all the other uh, phytonutrients um, and antioxidants in things like tomatoes and lycopenes and other produce too. Um, but lycopene really helps to um, improve our cellular functioning and um, it's been kind of looked at in certain studies to um, help 
reduce the risk of um, certain cancers that's still being uh, studied. It's not the silver bullet. It's not like the cure-all um, solution. But again, uh, tomatoes for this reason have been shown to be very important. So try to get your tomatoes into your diet. Um, they're just overall good for you. So tips for storage. Do not store in the fridge. Um, you lose sweetness and gain bitterness. So store at room temperature. Um, just normal stem side up don't put them upside down please just sit them on their butts on the counter um and that's how they do the best so super easy low maintenance to store as well okay peppers and all the things in the pepper family all different colors and types of peppers your ghost peppers which i i can't do um habanero um, jalapeno peppers and all of the the milder ones to your red yellow um, and green peppers loaded with vitamins and nutrients um so this the actual like family of fruit that this is is called uh, nightshade there are some people that have a nightshade allergy actually or can't eat nightshades um so you know it, it, if there's someone who is watching this that is one of those people just disregard <laughs> probably aren't going to have peppers or other nightshades in your house but um for those that do and have peppers regularly you'll want these to be in a crisper drawer in the bag and actually i have tested this by putting it in other places in the fridge keeping them on the counter um yeah and they they are super low maintenance super easy you can get sometimes you get the three pack um, of color peppers, the red, yellow, and green, and I'll just, they're all like bagged together, th those three, and I'll just throw the whole bag into a crisper drawer, and they're good for a week, if not longer. Um, depends, maybe if you buy organic, it, it might be a little bit less time. Um, I buy organic when I can, as you can see, these are on the Dirty Dozen list, so if you want to know more what the Dirty Dozen is, um, basically, it's what it sounds like. So there's a list of about a dozen uh, types of produce that are recommended to buy organic if you can, um, because they tend to absorb more pesticides and we do consume the flesh of the dozen um, types of produce on the dirty dozen list. So we can't just peel it like a banana or an avocado. Um, so that's why bananas and avocados are not on the Dirty Dozen list, um, but things like peppers and other nightshades and berries are, which we're going to get into berries next. Okay, so low maintenance storage for those of us um, that can do nightshades and have peppers. Everyone's favorite, those cruciferous veggies. Brussels sprouts are in this family as well. One of my personal favorite vegetables, actually. I like to roast them with a little bit of olive oil and some rosemary in the oven and oh my gosh just so good all right so super healthy for us um, again nutrition benefits are going to be in the pdf sent out so you can review them in more detail later on but jumping into tips for storage broccoli brussels sprouts specifically you want to chill immediately and eat within a day or two um, storing in the crisper drawer in a plastic bag uh, with some air holes poked in there will help it stay fresh a little bit longer but still eat these asap other things like cabbage, cauliflower, and kale in this um, cruciferous family don't need a bag, um, but still you'll have the most flavor soon after um, they're harvested from your garden or you know, by the time you buy them in the store, it's probably been a few days, if not a little bit longer. So eat them again ASAP. On the right-hand side of your screen where it says use it up in this column again, um, we can roast puree and add to soups and sauces. Peeling. Peeling stems um, for salads are chopped up uh, to use just as you would for the florets um, or pickling, canning and fermenting is a good way to uh, use up any leftover bits from cruciferous produce and um, reduce your landfill waste. All right, beans and peas, maybe more relevant getting into the fall with like chili season coming up. I can't believe we're already talking about like end of summer. It's kind of depressing. Um, but beans and peas, good to know. Store in a container or bag in the crisper drawer unwashed uh, until you are ready to use them. And then follow instructions for washing and soaking. If you have uh, um, dry beans and peas, that's a little bit different. Um, but if you buy them fresh, uh, fresh green beans, fresh peas, 
um, you want to keep them in that crisper drawer relatively dry, um, as dry as they are when you buy them. We don't want to add any water or moisture, um, which is why we don't want to wash them until we're ready to use them. Because again, they can kind of get a little soft and mushy um, and then they're icky and you don't want to eat them. Rhubarb, I think this is a garden, I don't want to say staple, but maybe a more common um, thing that you'll find uh, in the garden. I know my parents had rhubarb growing up. My mom made the best rhubarb pie. Um, so if you have rhubarb at your place or if you're going to be buying some for maybe making your own rhubarb dish in the future, it's best if you use it as soon as you get it. Removing the leaves, um, you can put in compost bin. Courtney and I have featured a number of workshops and podcasts of talking about um, composting. I'll mention more on that later. You can wrap the stems in a damp cloth or paper towel as well. Um, put them in a bag with more holes poked um, in the crisper drawer to freshen up stems. Again, place in a cup of water before using. No need to blanch these, just chop and freeze, and they hold really well in the freezer without any prep going in. You can also pickle these. Um, rhubarb, I've never had pickled rhubarb, but um, apparently that's something that you can do. So if anyone has pickled rhubarb um, and wants to share the outcome, let me know. Give a shout. Or drop a message in the chat. All right, apples and stone fruit. So stone fruit is the apricot, peaches, plums family, actually. So that was something that I learned. I I mean, maybe I learned that like 15 years ago in college, but obviously I've forgotten it since then. So stone fruit, I have no idea why it's called stone fruit, but apricots, peaches, um, uh, plums, and our apples kind of have the similar uh, care steps. So crisper drawer of the fridge, high humidity um, setting for, for that drawer. They like a lot of humidity. Early harvest for um, a few weeks and then late season apples can store for several months. So if you're getting your apples early in the season, like spring um, or early summer, then they typically don't keep as long. Uh, but if you are one of the fall apple pickers like me, um, or go around more, you know, in, in the leafy fall, um, apple and pumpkin, everything season, <laughs> like I do, uh, we're in luck because those apples will last a little bit longer. Okay. Freezing preserves more antioxidants than canning. Um, so that was something that, that I was kind of familiar with, wanted to pass along, um, not sure how widely known of a, of a fun fact that is, but I think it's maybe helpful. That's why I mentioned earlier at the beginning um, of the presentation that I do like to freeze. When in doubt, if I'll use something up in time before it goes bad, um, I just plop it in the freezer. Um, because it's, again, fresh is best. That's what Courtney and I say, but frozen um, is better than nothing and better than canned. All right, here are our berries. Um, as you can see, these are also the 20, 21, the most recent Dirty Dozen list um, food group. Uh, so because we eat the whole berry, the, the fleshy outsides and everything, um, they're just very porous. And so if you're trying to avoid pesticides um, and wondering if you should buy organic or when it's worth getting organic, follow that Dirty Dozen list. You can just Google it um, and it's updated every year. And the berries are on there. Again, in general, the rule of thumb is um, things that we eat the entirety of, the outside of, or we, we want to buy organic if we can, if we're trying to, um, if that's a goal of ours for reducing pesticides. If not, then go for it and get whatever you can. Anything is better than nothing, in my opinion. So if you're worried about going to the store and um, if you are like me and live out in the middle of nowhere and your local grocery store doesn't have an organic section um, and you're like, well, it's either these regular non-organic strawberries or nothing, just get the strawberries. Um, what I do real quickly, just to share my personal tip, is I actually let uh, berries, if they're not organic, um, I let them soak 
in a bowl of vinegar water. So I fill up the bowl with water, pour the berries in. I'll add, mm, I don't know, a splash, <laughs> maybe half a cup um, of vinegar and just let it sit for about 10 minutes. Um, actually, the vinegar helps to uh, release anything left on the outside. It's not going to get everything out, certainly nothing that's been absorbed internally, um, but better than nothing. All right, so berries store in the fridge um, and the freezer very well. And they're almost just as nutritious, um, whether you flash freeze it or buy them um, frozen and then thaw. They're very versatile. Um, you can buy them canned, you can buy them packaged. If you are buying them packaged um, in a little fruit cup uh, plastic container or a can, please, please, please um read the label and make sure that it says in water uh not in juice because sometimes fruit is stored and canned and, and packaged in juice and that's just extra syrup and sugar um that it's been sitting in and soaking up um which doesn't give it any really benefit besides giving us more calories and sugar so make sure that if you're buying berries um packaged canned uh or in a container that it's stored in water so you can preserve nutrients best um, for berries if you kind of just sprinkle a little bit of sugar, uh, just a, a pinch over them, um, powdered pectin, powdered vitamin C, or a combination before freezing. That's just a little fun fact. You don't have to. Again, these are very uh, relatively low maintenance and versatile, but if you just want to completely maximize um, how long they're going to be frozen for and the freshness when they um, are thawed, just sprinkle some, um, like basically this is powdered ascorbic acid, so vitamin C, pectin, um, and sugar does the same thing. All right, melon family. Essentially for all melons, um, keeping uncut watermelon or other melon on your counter for a few days um, will increase the lycopene. Remember I mentioned that lycopene earlier. Um, and that is a, a really powerful uh, nutrient um, that was in the tomatoes. It's also in melons. Um, so if you're looking to, again, just maximize uh, any nutrients where you can, simply keeping your melon on the counter for a couple extra days, obviously you're still using it before it goes bad, but say you buy it and it isn't quite ripe yet, that's all right, just let it sit. Um, and it's going to increase in lycopene content while it sits there, which is a win-win. I think wrapping up here, winter squash and, and pumpkins, um, to say simply, no need to blanch before freezing. Um, you can puree these. We can use all parts of uh, squash family and, and pumpkins. Um, we can use the seeds. We can use the pulp. We can use the fleshy inside. We can use the, the external skins. Um, storage, ideally in a cool, dry place, not touching um anything else and off the ground and then it cooks and reheats really well so you can add the guts <laughs> guts or or it's called like the fleshy inside part to baked goods to give it more moisture and i actually have done this believe it or not um with brownies um this is a recipe that courtney i featured in the past um, and it's delicious. So just adding a cup of canned pumpkin or pureed, if fresh pumpkin is best, to like brownies. Um, you can't taste the pumpkin, but it really increases the density and the moisture and just the gooey yumminess of the brownies. It's really good. <laughs> All right, herbs. Storing these um, should be treated like a bouquet of flowers. So room temp is fine, but fridge is good to loosely covered with in a plastic bag. And then the woody stem herbs um, should be treated like greens. So washed, wrapped, and then um, tucked into a plastic bag with a couple air holes poked in there. All right, this is the last one. So tips for preservation. Again, I'm not going to read through each thing on this slide. Um, again, you'll be getting this in our presentation notes, the PDF of all of the slides coming at you tomorrow, probably. Um, and it walks you through when to blanch, how to flash freeze, and then quick pickling. Okay. 
So this is where we drew our info from. If you want to do any researching of your own environmental working group, that last link, that last resource here listed at the bottom, ewg.org, um, is a really great resource. It's where you go for a lot of our info. So thank you for your time. Sorry we went about three minutes over, um, but we kind of got started a few minutes late there. So thank you for cooking with us today, and thank you for your time for listening. Um, along with the presentation notes and the PDF of these PowerPoint slides, tomorrow Courtney is also going to send out any recipes that we get from other listeners over the last few weeks who registered that wanted to share tips or um, utilization ideas for your, your produce, your garden or purchased produce, and a survey link. Um, so be sure to give us your feedback. If you like to hear my dog in the background, make sure you give Atlas a hug, uh, a virtual hug in your survey. He's looking at me right now like, oh, I would love a hug. I know, buddy. I know. Soon. Almost done. <laughs> um, and also, we will send out the recording. So if you want to watch this and replay at any point in the future, or if you think it's so great because it was so much fun and you want to share it with other people, please feel free. These are some other great things that Courtney and I do. Um, again, this list will be sent to you in the presentation notes. You can find us on YouTube, our podcast on Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast. Our Chopped Challenge is coming up. Registration is open until next week. And then as always, we offer telephonic, virtual, in-person, and outdoor walking coaching sessions. So hit us up, give a call, email anytime. Let us know if you have questions. And thank you for being here. Have a great rest of your day.